op optimization problem. Uh, we wish to find the dimensions of the largest uh, isosceles triangle that can be inscribed inside a circle of radius 4 centimeters. And here is the picture of this. And uh, you can see we have this triangle. You know, it's inside a circle. And uh, what's the biggest one? You can see you can probably draw this in many different ways and inscribe this triangle inside the circle. Well, the first, the most important part is the setup, of course. And here is the setup. Uh, notice we, we take advantage of the radius here. This is the center of the circle, the little dot. Radius 4, I draw an altitude down. And I make my altitude 4 plus y. And then I have a base, and I call this green part x. And of course, my base will be 2x. And uh, we have y is uh, greater than or equal to negative 4 or less than or equal to 4. I think that if y were 4, we wouldn't have much of a triangle there, probably an uh, area of 0. But uh, that those are our um, endpoints. And of course, we know the area of a triangle is 1 half the base times the height. Well, the base again is 2x, and the height is y plus 4, again taking advantage of that uh, radius there. I also drew a radius here, and the reason is that I can, this makes a small right triangle, and I can relate x and y. And so I end up with an area um, of uh, x times 4 plus y when I simplify this 1 half times 2x expression. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get rid of this x. I'm going to eliminate this x. And the way I do that is I know that x squared plus, well, let me go back here. Uh, x squared plus y squared equals 4. So uh, that's what I use. And I find that x is the square root of 16 minus y squared. And I'm going to substitute that in right there for that x. And when I do that, I get this expression. Now, uh, I've got an area in terms of y alone. And I know that y is uh, defined, uh, uh, the area of this function is defined in a closed interval. Therefore, I'm guaranteed an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum. So I don't have to go through the number line drill to find, a, to see if it's, if when I get a, a critical value or an endpoint, I don't have to see if it's a, a maximum or minimum. I know the largest function value will be the maximum and the smallest function value will be the minimum. And possible uh, max and mins are, of course, the endpoints, negative 4 and 4, and I get 0 in each time. Remember, this is y and a, y and a, and not x and y, so be careful of that. So these are the y values and the endpoints, and I see get 0 each time. Now, uh, of course, the thing that uh, where else am I going to look for absolute maximums and minimums are critical points of the derivative of the area. So I have to take the derivative, and that is a long drawn out process. And I would advise you to um, take a look at this thing, <laughs> stop the movie, and see uh, how this derivative uh, was gotten. And we use a product rule at first, and we get a common denominator, and then we combine like terms, and then finally I come down here and I um, uh, you know, I factor this uh, quadratic, and this puts it in a good form. So you might stop the movie. You know, here it is in the beginning. There it is, the first part, and then of course the end here. And you can practice doing this derivative. It's a very tough derivative. So here's my derivative again, I believe. Yeah, there it is. The ch the change in the area with respect to y equals this expression. Now I'll find my critical values, whatever makes the denominator 0 or whatever makes the numerator 0 are my critical values. And if you take a little time to, not very much time, right, my critical values are 4, negative 4, and 2, and we've already had 4 and negative 4. Now by the process of elimination, okay, we know that this 2 is going to be the absolute, this is the value of y that will give me my absolute uh, maximum because these are obviously less. If I put 2 into the function, uh, then I get 12 times the square root of 3. I've already plugged it in there, but here's how I got it. I just put 2 in for y. You might stop the movie again and make sure you understand that. But I get my area from obviously plugging in the y value into the area. Now, um, I know that y equals 2, but I'd like to find out what x is. Remember the picture? And of course, we know that x is the square root of 16 minus y squared. Remember when we solve for x, and we just put in 2 in here, and 2 times the square root of 3 is x. So 
when x equals 2 times the square root of 3 and y equals 2, I'll have my maximum uh, area for this triangle. Now we, I was asked for the dimensions of this, so obviously I have to add f uh, 4 to y to get the altitude, the height, and I have to double x to get the base, and that's what I do here. Here it is. Thus the dimensions of the largest isosceles triangle that can be inscribed inside a circle of radius 4 has dimensions of 6 meters as a height and a base of 4 times the square root of 3 meters.